Welcome back everyone. My name is Denise and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark. I have some weekend sales to ship out. I like to do a little ship with me video on Monday and it was kind of sleepy this weekend. I had a little uh, quality over quantity moment. I'm shipping out seven things for $387 in sales. Little quick math on that. That is a $55 average sales price. If I accepted an offer or went back and forth with a buyer on an item, I'm going to refrain from talking about that and I'm just going to say it was an offer from the buyer or whatever because I am putting out now a weekly video that breaks down kind of my experience with accepting, countering, blocking, declining offers from buyers. We're gonna get started right away. I have a pretty unique item going out first. I have to decide actually, I haven't really thought it through how I'm gonna ship these. I'm assuming a little bit of padding in a medium box. I sold five, eight, six, one, two, nine. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are little Madame Alexander dolls that are in costume. I don't know if that's common that Madame Alexander dolls are, you know, in costume or if it was due simply to the time of year that these came out. Um, I sold these Madame Alexander dolls as one lot. I sold them for $34. So that's that. approximately uh, like $4 a doll. They didn't have a high value to them. I picked them all up in one lot itself. I really made no claim about the condition of these dolls, except that they were still all sealed in their original packaging. There may have been 10 or 12 of these released, but I have the first nine. Okay, so I personally don't pick up a lot of hard goods. I do have an American Girl doll that's been sitting in my closet right now for, my goodness, I've probably had it about a year. I did thrift it for 20 bucks and it's just kind of not really had a lot of traction. Do I recommend picking up McDonald's toys, dolls, that kind of thing? I. It's not my wheelhouse, so I'm not going to recommend this. I'm just sharing what I sold the item for. I feel fortunate to have sold these. I'm happy to have sold them, but um, would I pick them up again? So since I didn't pay per item and I sold them in one lot, I paid $5 for them. So um, after posh fees, I've made about $20 on them. So that is a profit margin. That is my kind of minimum threshold profit margin. You know, basically, does it excite me to pick these up? No, I don't know why I did. I probably came like right off the heels of selling maybe a vintage Barbie or something like that. And then I get kind of jazzed about a particular category. And sometimes, you know, reasoning goes out of my head. They're sold, they're gone. I don't really feel like an authority to be able to recommend picking up collectibles. I'm just gonna call them collectibles. So as I mentioned, I, um, you know, didn't have a lot of sales this weekend. Some Sundays I can have seven sales alone and I just didn't. And I'm okay with it. I'm not chasing sales at the moment. Oddly enough, on Saturday, I actually turned off my offers to likers because I just felt like, you know what happened? Someone sent me a counter offer and you know, when you get a counter offer on an item, you kind of see the historical pricing of the item when you've sent out offers, when you've edited the listing, that kind of thing. So I think what happened was I received a counter offer on an item and then 
I took a closer look kind of at that historical uh, pricing perspective on the item and I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna pause from sending out offers. So in general, my offers look like this. When someone likes an item in the closet, in my closet for the most part, they receive a 15% off offer. I am shipping out right now a pair of Lululemon Run Speed in crushed black cherry. The waistband itself was called Star something. Someone bought these for $45 in my closet. No offers um, either way, not an offer from Liker. And the person purchased the item before my offers to Likers was even um, sent out. So that's nice. Sometimes Posh Sidekick has a little lag to it. It's not just like sending out an immediate offer to someone. Sometimes it takes up to like 15 minutes. Sometimes I have it set for five minutes, but it sends it a little bit more organically. Um, so I just let the software do what it needs to do personally. But this person decided to purchase the item. So I am happy about that because obviously that's 15% more profit in my pocket that I often mention. It's called like the shoot your shot, right? It's just like, if I could get fully what I want for these shorts, what would I get? I'd get $45 and I did. So if you don't price at the point that you really want for an item, you're never gonna be able to get it. Of course I could have priced these at $30. They were black cherry. Black cherry, you can't buy anymore. They're harder to find. I know people look for that color in particular, so I ran with it. I normally price run speed shorts in my closet for closer to 30 or 32. It's just, a little bit strategy based on my end. I sold this flax top. Now flax is linen. To me, it's more like a vest, but it's actually it has a little tie in the back that you can adjust it. I am not steaming this. So I had this in my closet for 45, I believe. I'm gonna do the thing where I protect the buttons in shipping. And they sent me an offer of 35 and I accepted. So what's interesting is that I have sold flax in the past for a pretty good price point, like a solid 50, $55. And I think there were shorts. I've sold a few other shirts. I've had a few pieces sitting. So of course, um, you know, when I receive a counter offer from someone, I like to look at comps and kind of see what the brand's selling for, keeping a pulse on, should I accept this or not accept this? And I really noticed that a lot of people are accepting 25, 20 to $25 for flax now. So with a $35 offer, I decided to accept it. This piece was, um, fairly new in my closet. It maybe had been posted for a month, I would say. It was definitely in one of those pushes that I've had recently to get items posted or an item that I recently picked up. So this is headed out. So I sold these jeans for $130. They are I'm a Jean and Willie. I'm actually gonna get up to show the label on these because they're pretty special. This brand sells their jeans in, sorry, this brand sews and makes their jeans in Tennessee. And they have a pretty cool social media presence. The funny thing about these jeans is that I actually um, own two pairs of these jeans. I love these jeans so much that I have had them professionally repaired in Los Angeles before because I couldn't get my hands on another pair. So like with most companies, you know, they release an item and then they go through different phases of redesign. They potentially change the con 
the composition of the denim, something along those lines. And that's what happened with these jeans. Now these are a first generation, even the label has changed. And so that's why I was showing you the I'm a Jean and Willie label on that, because that is a first generation. And I do think in my heart of hearts, considering I sold them for $130, that the older versions of I'm a Jean and Willie also selfishly because I love mine I do believe that um they are special and a little bit nicer so mm, shucks bunny the sticker just womp <laughs> unfortunately I'm gonna put a piece of washi tape to attach this closet for $153 and I received an offer from the buyer and I accepted it. I do kind of have this insider information about these particular jeans because I wear them. So that is why I felt confident in my price point of these. I do believe just straight up retail value now on Imogene and Willie are going to be about $295 and then making them a style that you can no longer go out and buy or they've been redesigned. To me, I kept that in mind when I priced them. Now those were not a fast sell. I have a few quick sells, one being these shoes that I posted a day ago, um, but those were not them. So these next three items that I'm about to post have been in my closet for maybe two weeks, three at most. Viore joggers, a pair of um, Kisa flats, and these Birkenstocks. Okay, so the next item I am going to ship out is just a pair of Viore Performance joggers. Um, these actually do not have a tag in them. They are pilled and I listed them for $33 and put that my price is firm and I won't be sending out offers and someone purchased them today. Basically, when I was trying to depill them, I put a little hole in them with my sweater shaver. <laughs> Not really a win on my part, but I take full <laughs> kind of ownership of that. That's something that you really have to be aware of. And so these joggers look to be in good shape. Sometimes Viore can get pilled on the inside. And so these are actually that. They're pilled on the inside of the pant. I cleaned up the outside as best as I could and I will not be doing any more depilling to these because I don't want to create any further damage to them. So normally I would post a pair of these in my closet for $68 to $55 with the expectation that they would sell for closer to $55. And knowing that they had damage and I put in the listing title, call out. So if you do have that situation where you are depilling a pair of joggers and you put a little tiny hole in them. I mean, it's not huge. It's in a part of the leg that is not gonna be stretched out. So you won't even really see the hole, but it doesn't mean it's not there. You have to disclose any issues with an item. So basically what I do is I price that around half price of what I would normally price it. I put call out in the listing title and then I usually don't send offers on the item. I really just send it and sell it as is. And that's just simply how I handle those situations. Obviously, um, if it was within the window of time, I could have returned them from where I purchased them, but I didn't want to deal with that. And I thought I only paid $6.99 or $7.99 for them. So I thought at $33, I can still make a decent profit if I sell these. Even if I sold them for $28, I would have been fine with that. So yeah. 
for a damaged item, I adjust my expectations and proceed accordingly. Sometimes I want to message the buyer and go, did you know that these are damaged? But I refrain. I feel like because I put it right in the title that I do have a sense of security, I guess, when sending out an item that is damaged. Now, I have two more items to ship out. And the first one is a pair of Birkenstock. I believe that they are called the Milanos. I'm just gonna... I already treated these, but so these are called big buckles, right? And anthropology sells these, um, free people sells these. They are a very modern style Birkenstock. I happen to source two pairs of these, a black pair with silver buckles, and then this pair. These are an oiled leather, so they naturally show things like scuffs and the like. I added that to my listing details that these have a patina to the leather. That is the language that I prefer to use because leather naturally ages. It just does. And something like a nubuck or an oiled leather is going to absolutely age and show scuffs. And that is just really the part of purchasing something that's not synthetic. I think personally, that is actually the beauty of the item. In my humble opinion, the way a natural leather ages, I think is what makes it lovely. So I just posted these on a day ago, uh, yesterday I posted these and they sold today. So. There you have it. Pat myself on the back. I sourced them on Saturday, posted them on Sunday, shipped them out on Monday. I did accept an offer from the buyer. And Sorry, these are called the Birkenstock Madrid Big Buckles. That style with the one strap, kind of like a flip floppy to me. You know, not a thong, but is definitely in that way. Um, it's called the Madrid. I feel like these, okay, I am gonna put these in a medium box, but I don't really wanna ship them in a medium box because they're gonna be a little loosey-goosey in there, but that's okay. I just don't want the backs of these to be compromised in the shipping process, so. It's funny, I definitely, you know, prefer to ship out. I did ship on Saturday, so I definitely prefer to ship out 10 to 12 things or maybe more on Monday. But honestly, if I can ship out seven items at $55 average sales price, I really, I can't complain about that. That is great for me. That is really just hitting the target of what I want. So these shoes are called Kisa, I think, K-I-S-A. So these are really designed like a Saba. These look exactly like a Saba. Now Sabas are made in the USA. I believe these were made in Turkey and they sell for a lot of money. I have sold a pair of trashed Sabas. I mean, lots of wear to them, a beautiful royal color blue for more than I sold these for. And these do have wear to them. So these sold to an offer from the Liker for $45. I want to say that I posted these really just within the past week. So quick seller on these as well. I think sawas in general are very desired because on the secondhand market, any kind of um, cottage industry, handcrafted shoe, natural leather is absolutely going to, I think, have great interest in it. And so, yeah, 
That's why I picked these up, even though they weren't Saba's, because they were made in, I believe, Turkey by a company that does specialize in hand making them. So it's funny how when you go to put something in a box, it feels kind of tight this way, but when I put it this way, it doesn't. So weird. I am just using packing paper, and this is all I do. I, As I've mentioned many times in my videos, I really don't like to use excessive packaging. I don't like to use plastic in my packaging. I try to keep it to recyclable items and really just keep it to a bare minimum. So, okay friends, that's actually all I have. I appreciate you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed just seeing kind of what's selling in my closet, what people are looking for, and um, I hope everyone is doing well. Take care, see you soon. Bye.